Hello, welcome back to this space. We are continuing on the first room of a cone. Seeing this means that you have watched the first episode where we discuss the introduction into a frost room. Here, we are picking the volume. We know a frost room is a, a part, a truncated part of a cone. So if I'm looking for the volume of this, it means I need to find the volume of the bigger cone, the original cone minus the slice of cone. So let's develop from that. We know that we have to remember that the volume of a cone is given by one third pi r square what h, right? That is what we know. So first of all, to find the volume of the truncated one, we need to know the volume of the original one. So first thing first, volume of let me use bigger, okay? Bigger cone is going to be one third pi r square. The r is the radius of the base. In this case, they're using capital. We've defined them in the previous episode. So we use capital R square H. H is going to be from here to the top, which we define in there to be small h plus the capital H. So we're having this plus this as the, the volume. So in finding the volume of the bigger one, this is what we are going to use. Then volume of smaller comb is also going to be one third pi times r square. And here the r is a smaller one. So we have r square h. Where is the h? The height. So we have the volume of the smaller and the bigger one. So fast forward, volume of first room is going to be the volume of the bigger one, which will be one third pi r square h plus h minus one third pi r square h. So in most cases, you just have to take this concept in finding the volume of a first room. If you want to uh, base on the formula, meaning uh, a redefined formula, which will not make the subtraction of this, then you can continue for us to break it down and see how we can have a generalized formula that you just quote. If you can remember the formula, you quote, and you use it to find the volume. Apart from that, this concept is what we use in finding the volume of a first room. Find the volume of the original one minus the volume of the truncate, the, the slice of one will give you the remaining portion. You are good to go. Or we also can get a generalized formula. Let's see how we can do that. In the case of this, I can see one third pi, one third pi being common. So we take that off as one third pi of remaining r square h plus h minus r square h. I guess that can be done. All right. Then we can also see that small r is common. So we can expand the bracket a bit to have, don't forget this is equals to, okay, one third pi, we have r square h, then we have what? r square h minus r square h. All right, I think we are getting somewhere. If you check from here, we can factorize this one out to have one third pi. Let me bring that one first to have, okay, r square h plus your h being common factor, then r square minus what? r square. All right, so this is what we are going to have further. If you check carefully, you will see that the capital R will be part of the truncated uh, cone. You get it? I remember, I remember we mentioned that the truncated cone could be a bucket. It could be uh, a table lamp. So if 
it is given to you directly as a bucket. We need to know the part of it. And what are the parts? We know capital H, we can use it. Capital R, we can use it. Then the only thing that we are not having here that will help us find the volume is the small H. So we need to find what the small H will be before we can be able to proceed. So looking at this, we are going to use the fact that let me make a sketch here. So let's see this. If you take care of this, if you look at this carefully, you will see it from here. V to P. You can see V to P to B to D to O. So R is here. R is here. A is here. If you look at it carefully. Now, we can also develop a, a ratio. This is going to be a similar triangle. One triangle will be enlarged to form the other. The smaller one will be enlarged to form this. So we can, let me label this as figure one. So from the figure, we can find the ratio of their corresponding size to be the longer one, which will be age plus age. Divided by this is the longer side. I am comparing the longer side here to the smaller one, which will be age. Then the longer radius compared before the smaller radius. We want to compare that. And if we check carefully, we can see that age is of here. The R is not there. Capital R is there. Small age. So we can make this the subject. The age, we can make it the subject from here. By cross multiplying. What will it be? I'll be having R capital R H plus H. Then this will multiply to give us R H. Do you see that? If you cross multiply, you'll be having this. I believe we can be able to make uh, H the subject here by expanding this bracket. So where do we go? So from here, if we expand, okay, let's take care of this more before. That will give us R H expansion. R H equals to R H. I think you know the age difference, capital and small letter. Then the small letters can be grouped. So R capital H equals to capital R small h minus R h. You see that? We are grouping like terms. So h h will be common. So R h will be equals to h into bracket capital R minus what? Small r. So if we divide by the age, you'll be having your... Okay? We are looking for the small age. So we divide by this rather. So your small age will be equals to what do you have? R capital H over R minus what? R. So we are going to put in this into this very equation. Let's uh, say this is going to be equation 2. Then let's label this to be equation 1. So putting equation 2 into equation 1, the volume becomes, what do we have? One third pi, right? Into bracket R square H, what do we have? Plus R H divided by R minus H. Multiplying, what do we have? R square minus what? R square. All this is being multiplied by one third pi. What can we do in here? If you check here carefully, in the case of this, we are seeing this having a counterpart in there, right? If I find a difference of two square from here, this can be able to go there and cancel. So from here, we can say that our V will be 1 on 3 pi into bracket R square H plus, you know this is a difference of 2 square. So this will cancel the negative aspect, leaving the R 
if into bracket r plus what r i guess so right we can do that then let's take care of this this is going to be equals to one third pi r square each we are expanding this right so this will be plus r r each right plus r square each do we see that r r square then the a to come i can see h h h being common so i can factorize the age out to have one third pi h into bracket r square plus r r plus r square so this become the volume of a first room So in case, as I said in the beginning, if you don't want to do the subtraction and you are just interested in the formula, you can say that the volume of a first room is going to be one third pi h. And this h is part of the truncated uh, cone. Then the r, which is the radius of the base. The small r is the radius of the top. When you cut it off, you still have a, a base in there. Then the R. So you can see all the three dimensions are on the first room. So you can be able to use it directly to apply if you can remember the formula. If you can't, find the volume of the smaller one, find the volume of the bigger one, then perform the subtraction. Whatever subtraction you get, that gives you your final answer. I guess you get the tutorial into how the formula is derived. Good. In the next episode, you will deal with how we can find the total surface area and the curved surface area of a first room before we will pick questions to test the formula. Come back to this space for more tutorial. Share, like, and comment. Bye-bye.